So what are the roles and the priorities for you when you go into this scenario? Everybody except those that have been assigned to the scenario then are going to um, take their observation sheet and they go into this, uh, the sim lab. And that group then decides who's going to perform which role. So who's going to be the assessment nurse, who's going to be medication nurse, all of those, who's going to be the team leader, et cetera, and delegate type things. And then they come in and we perform the scenario and they go through all of the same things that they would with uh, a real patient. So we go in here, we perform the sim, um, and Greg will give us pointers during the sim if we need it, but most of the time it's pretty, pretty much we lead it. A lot of sim lab is communicating with both the patient and the doctor. You want to understand everything that the patient is worried or had concerns about, as well as being the eyes and ears for the doctor. It teaches you what to expect. At the hospital, you never know what's going to go wrong because the patient might be stable at one minute, and the next minute the patient is coding, and you don't even know what's going on. And so then they go through that scenario while their classmates are writing down all of the data that they, uh, they observe, also their behaviors, uh, monitoring for anything that they should have done, making note of that. The scenario is on task, on time. We give them about 15 minutes for that scenario, and then it's time out, and then we uh, go into debriefing. After each simulation session, we will go back into the room and we talk about how we feel about the situation, what we did right, what we could do better, and when we get back in class and the other group is saying, if it was me, I would have done this differently. If it was me, I would have done this differently. We always go back there and he'll be like, well, so how do you think that went? The debrief is more of, if you were doing it right, then solidify that information. And if you were doing it wrong, build on it and do it right the next time or do it better the next time. We just work through the scenario even more. I ask those three people, you know, for that input. And then I let them know what I saw that went really well. And then the class also, the rest of the group talks about what they saw that went well because they've written that down on paper. And then we talk about, well, what didn't go so well and why didn't it go so well? So what made you choose that assessment or that intervention at that time? Then we always end with, I make all the students do IS bar. So they introduce themselves. They talk about what is the situation, what's the background, what's the assessment, and then what are their recommendations for the doctor or the oncoming um, nurses. Because we use, we're using unfolding case studies more, especially in the last two semesters, where it's the same patient in three different times of their hospitalization. And so then they report off to the next oncoming shift of nurses for what they did in their scenario. For someone who had no experience like as a CNA or an LPN before, being in the sim lab gave, gave me some kind of expectation. Why should I expect when I'm entering a patient's room? So being able to do it physically is better for me than hearing how to do it or watching it on a YouTube video or something like that. So it's really beneficial to work with another person or another group because then, you know, you have eight heads instead of just one. This is my time to learn how to be a nurse. Because I've developed the scenarios, I know what I expect from the assessment data, the vital signs, and these are typically based on real patients that I've had over the years as a nurse. I know what the, I know the situation of the patient, the background information, and where I want that scenario to go. So every scenario has objectives and expected outcomes. I know what I'm looking for I know what they should be pulling out of that background information, what cor the vital signs that correlate with that, medications that correlate with that, and then what were the important initial assessments that were in this homework for them. And so I know what, what the priorities should be in there before they ever come into the room.